Azula is a lot of people's favorite character, which makes talking about her kind of difficult. A lot of the reasons that people really admire the concept of a redemption story for her is that it lets them morally pin down their characters from a transition point from being a baddie who does bad things into being a goodie who does good things. Zuko starts off being a victim of the circumstances he grew up in, learns from his environment, and goes through a redemption arc, which ultimately leads to him joining the good guys and becoming someone who helps fight against the institutions that he was a part of. And we fucking love redemption stories. The issue is that there are narrative reasons why in the original series Azula doesn't get a redemption. It's not just that they ran out of time or something. Azula is a proxy for what imperialism does to the people who grow up under it, which was an underlying motif all throughout Avatar Last Airbender. When we talk about Ozai, for example, it's a very commonly understood idea that Ozai is a one-dimensional caricature of a villain. He is a mustache twirling, dick dastardly, nonsense person. But a lot of Ozai's depth comes through Azula, who represents the middle stage of how someone turns into Ozai. You grow up under that environment, you become validated by the structures of power around you for every instinct towards dehumanizing oppositions, every violent instinct, all of that shifts someone like Azula ultimately into someone like Ozai. And Ozai is someone who the narrative recognizes as irredeemable and beyond being able to be helped. The idea that Azula should be redeemed is coming from a fundamentally optimistic view that everyone who is shaped by imperialism can and should come around to the morally correct position of being someone who fights against imperialism, which on its surface is already kind of a morally childish kind of outlook to have. And it also comes from the idea of like us wanting redemption for a character because it somehow makes them a better character if they get redeemed. Which, as Ozai shows, is not necessarily true. Because the physical embodiment of imperialism shouldn't get redeemed. That is a corrosive idea. The idea that all people and all vectors in your world can be just reversed like that. Redemption arcs are kind of a fucked up concept when you break them down too much. Redemption often has a very religious kind of condition where like, you did a bunch of bad things, but if you do enough good things, it it cancels out the bad things, which no, that, that's, not, that's not how being a morally good person has ever worked. The way that we frame morality around them doing good things to cancel out the bad things is why so many different like genocidal Hitlers in media have entirely poisoned discourse around them because people are unable to separate the idea of them being able to have turned into a person who recognizes what they did as wrong from the idea of them having made up for or canceled out the bad things that they did. That's not how becoming a morally improved person works. And also, and corrupt of a concept, the idea of a moral event horizon. You can do something that is just so evil, your soul has been lost to God, which is subconsciously, I think, how people are thinking of this. Well, he killed a person and now he's irredeemable. As if any action that turns people to being beyond the point where they can reflect on their thoughts and move past that. In real life, there is a kind of version of that, which is like the whole doubling down thing in cognitive dissonance, where like at a certain point, you're so deep in that psychologically, you justify it to yourself and you've become so normalized to this that you're unable to walk yourself out of that. But that's an entirely different concept than this moral arithmetic that people love to do with people like Azula. And that's not even getting into this whole idea that Azula needs to be redeemed because the idea of redemption just makes you a better character, like, inherently. And also, like, you need to, like, redeem someone as a way to justify being able to find them as a valuable character. People can be incredibly narratively complex, interesting, and valuable without having to be fixed, without the narrative following an inherent belief that people are always on an arc towards going from being bad to good. As if in their sinful state, always go through a process of getting better, which in the fans' defense is almost a universal way that Avatar works. No one in the entire franchise has ever gone worse over time and stayed bad. Like, Azula is honestly interesting because she's always been framed as someone who is like nearly as maniacally evil as Ozai, perhaps worse at times. Like she's the one who came up with the idea to genocide the entire Earth Kingdom. That was on her. But there's always like this very faint subtext that a lot of what she's doing is coming from a place of being validated by her family and not knowing how to think about herself in any other terms, which is tragic, which is compelling, which which is the human heart in conflict with itself, but it is not someone like Zuko who always recognized the inherent humanity of other people and also always understood that they could pursue that and be changed in that way. Like Zuko's journey is much more a journey of him rediscovering who he always was. The seeds were always there for him to have that empathy for other people. He was just shifted away from it by his culture. Azula, meanwhile, to the degree that the show understands what this is, is, is a sociopath. Full disclaimer, that is not a real term in psychology and it's borderline becoming like a, a, a nonsense term to even apply, but Azula is someone who seems to psychologically struggle with understanding and empathizing with other people and had that so naturally shaped by her environment to become the perfect avatar of genocide and imperialism. But at the same time, the idea that people like her are just inherently evil is also a corrupt concept. And under the right environment, Azula, even with that kind of background going on in her psychology, wouldn't necessarily turn out like that. And there is a value in exploring a story, showing her ability to walk back from that kind of place that she's like outside of her control shifted into. And this is 
is of course also the reason Azula doesn't lose her bending, because the narrative doesn't believe Azula is so far gone to deserve to be treated as like this avatar of atrocity that must be put down like old Yeller for the sake of everyone else. But we do need to balance that with the fact that she has constantly been shaped under imperialism and not once shown even the faintest hint of even understanding the concept of empathizing with or relating to other people beyond their ability to be useful to her. And the only time that she has has been related to toxic, self-destructive, borderline abusive contacts with her best friends, who she can't really distinguish between caring about them and seeing them as vectors for her own self-aggrandizement. There's a lot of really interesting things going on there, and there is a lot of interesting things that can happen with having her character develop by being in this new world that the gang have created, where the imperialism that she defined her entire existence around no longer exists as a grounding force that she can try to validate herself in contact with. She no longer has Ozai as an authority figure pursuing respect for. These are all really interesting dynamics that can and should help shift her into a new person. But as far as someone who should be redeemed, whether or not she is capable of being redeemed is not a concept I think is worth really examining. Because the concept of suggests that the way that you respond to the imperialism you have done is one about your own personal moral salvation. And I don't think that is something that is in the cards for Azula, nor would be an honest way to resolve her story. She is not someone who needs to find salvation through becoming a better person. She is someone who needs to come to terms with her own damaged psychology, the way her family has shaped her, and perhaps her relationship with her brother. But there's never been anything suggesting that there is a deeper understanding between Azula and the larger impact of her surroundings that has honestly been flushed out in a way that would make for a satisfying redemption. 